Oh yeah, the best. Hey guys, so I'm not gonna cook today. I showed you that coffee earlier, just a little snippet. So I did make the whipped coffee again, but we decided to support a local restaurant and get some delicious barbecue. So I'll just show you guys the food. Don't worry, we cleaned the containers and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited to try this. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Good, good Smoke Barbecue, but it's so good. Um, one of my favorites around here. So I'll show you ribs, some brisket, and some wings. Um, some pulled pork egg rolls, uh, cornbread, cheesy tots. This is like a brisket and corn mac and cheese and then some Cajun corn. So yeah, I apologize, it's not a, <laughs> a cooking vlog, but sometimes I need a break too. All right, that food was really, really good. So Tim and I kind of ranked what we thought our favorites were. Um, by far, the mac and cheese with the brisket and the Cajun corn, it was so good. It had the brisket in this, um, in this application was really tender, um, perfectly seasoned. It had like a tangy barbecue sauce. It was like slightly, slightly sweet, slightly vinegary, um, which I usually go for the mustard kind of vinegar base. So it was nice to try something a little bit different, but the Cajun corn was like the sleeper hit in that it was so well seasoned, definitely had like a Cajun butter, but really good. And their mac and cheese is always good. Um, that was by far our favorite. I'd probably say my second favorite was probably the wings. Um, they were perfectly cooked. They weren't over fried. I don't know if you ever have that with chicken wings where they're just like so over fried and dried out, but these were just had enough texture on the outside. And especially since we had to transport it because we went and picked it up for, it was about 20 minutes away. They actually held their crispiness and the sauce was like kind of sweet and tangy. Kind of reminded me of like a country sweet kind of with a little bit of like a mustard base i think i, I don't know if it's 100 percent certain but really good i don't like blue cheese but it came with a house made blue cheese and i think tim really enjoyed that it looked like it had maybe even some uh like some dried herbs or some fresh herbs in there it, was, it looked really good just not my not what i like uh, i think tim what was your second favorite the cornbread yeah he's shaking his head yes so the cornbread it's really it's not too sweet but it has like a sticky glaze on the outside, but it's not like coyingly sweet like some cornbreads. I really liked it, it had a great texture. I always enjoy the cornbread. Um, yeah, those are probably our top favorites. Oh, there was like che like cheesy tater tots too. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Um, the brisket in the mac and cheese was, was really good. Um, we had like the whole pieces, and I don't know if it was because it was cut a little bit thick, um, but it was, a, it was a little bit chewier. Um, but usually when I get brisket, it's cut a little bit thinner. So it might've just been a matter of it, of it not being cut properly. Flavor wise, it was delicious. And I had that with, uh, I think it was like, they do like a cherry barbecue sauce. I think that's what it was. Um, but it, it was good. And then the crispy ribs, I always get the, um, the actual like smoked like barbecue ribs. So I wanted to try something different. I wish I would've just gone with like the traditional um, like barbecue um, spare ribs. Um, these were good, but I mean, it was kind of a similar sauce to the wings, and the wings just did it better. But overall, delicious food. It's really great to support a local business. It's our favorite barbecue joint. We normally go and get, like, they have different um, variations of sandwiches with the barbecued meats, but we usually eat that there. We just didn't think that the bread would transfer properly. Um, but all in all, a delicious, delicious meal. I have my absolute new favorite beer. I know I showed you guys this, I think, two or three episodes ago, but it's so good. I'm obsessed with it. And I, I think that one is, is plenty. What's the alcohol content? 6.5? Yeah, that's plenty. <laughs> um, and I believe it was $14.99 for a four pack, but for the quality of this beer, I think it's worth it, especially if you're a sour fan. So I've got this open, and then um, I'm gonna gather all my cookbooks so I can show you. All right, these are the majority of my cookbooks. Oh, I like the Rollman's 20. I'll pull that one out. So we'll just kind of go through the ones I actually read. This one, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this is a really good book. Um, I have not, okay, so I got this for Christmas and I was really excited about it, but I have not, I, maybe I will make something from this because I haven't done that yet. Where is my favorite book? Oh, it's in my car. It's called The New Spanish Table, but that's okay. Um, hmm, this one is, uh, I, I actually stole it from my buddy Ken, but I remember the first lemon tart I ever made was from this cookbook. Here's the rest of the bookshelf. So, okay, so this is all the cookbooks on the bottom here. And then I organized it by a genre. This, so these are some books, well, not all of these, but a bunch of them are about music. Um, my husband, Tim, um, is very much into music. So these are a bunch of his. Um, this one's mine. He got me this. 
It's really good. And then um, I was a history major, which I'll tell you, talk a little bit mo about more later. Um, but these are a bunch of um, books that I had when I was in college um, that I actually wanted to keep. I bought them because I'm genuinely interested in them. Um, but they're kind of uh, organized, and these are more organized based on um, on topic. But I'm a huge nerd. And then these are some like more science and, uh, um, let's see, there's some anthropology books in here as well, some travel. So that's that bookshelf. So this would be kind of your nonfiction area if we're going to be technical. All right, this is probably the area I'm a little bit more embarrassed by. These are all my kind of like teen fiction kind of ones, but well, not all of them, but a good amount of them are. I don't know. I like to read those. They're easy to go through, especially like if you're on vacation, and you just want to read a, like a really crappy book. And these are just some old textbooks too. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some Stephen King in here. That's that's good. This book is really weird. Waking Gods. I like that. Um, and then. I have some more over here. I have a bunch of DVDs up on the top shelf, so I'm just gonna not show that. But these are just more. These are just some fiction. Um, so are there, there are some good books in here. Well, these aren't fiction. Those are books that I was reading recently. Um, but there's some decent ones in here. Some are Tim's, but he says the crappy ones are mine, so I'll take blame for the bad books. All right, and these are kind of more of your classics. So there are some novels in here, um, and then I believe we split down into short stories and essays. Yes, I think so. And then I know that we there's some more essays and then poetry, which Tim and I both have a lot of volumes of poems, two full shelves. And these are a bunch of Tim's records. But yeah, those are some of my books, and then I have a bunch right by my, uh, my nightstand, and then a bunch of old magazines. I don't know, I'm kind of a hoarder. <laughs> This book is pretty awesome. So Michael Ruhlman has written quite a few books like The Making of a Chef and The Soul of a Chef. But this one's pretty cool because it breaks down different techniques. So like, oh, there's mayonnaise. We made that. Um, and then it breaks it down and then we'll give you like variations. So like, let me find. So oh, hold on. So like one of, it's not necessarily a cooking technique, but salt. So salt's a really important thing, right? But there's shows like curing or brining. All right, so these are two newer books that my parents got for me, I think two years ago for Christmas. All right, so this is that Marco Pierre White book, and this is the first dessert I really ever made. One, well, I mean, I made like chocolate chip cookies and things like this, but this was like one of the first things I ever tried making. Um, this is actually my friend Ken's book, so Ken, if you're watching, I have it, but you have my copy of Vicky Cristina Barcelona, so we're even. Uh, <laughs> but I really like this book a lot. He let me borrow it. So as I was kind of saying before, because I was talking about Ken, um, I'm in this cooking group with my friends called Du Jour. Um, and it started, I want to say like... It's probably seven years ago. Wow, I'm old. Um, so we used to all work together at the same place and all cook together at the same place. And we decided we liked to hang out with each other that, that much and talk about food that much that we wanted to do a cooking group. So we used to do these things called test kitchens where we would make, um, we'd test out different dishes because we would do these um, very elaborate four to nine course meals for like 40 to 50 people and it was all um like kind of for charity it wasn't an actual business disclaimer uh, <laughs> but we oh, it was so fun we were we, it was very creative we would all have our different cooking styles i definitely as you kind of see in my style um i would say not simplistic but i like let ingredients really speak for themselves i have a lot of passion for spanish and a mediterranean food that's what i really enjoy and then i like to play around with asian flavors sometimes I actually like to prefer to eat that more than anything. Um, and then Ken was very like traditional French at the time, but he's been cooking a lot of like um, like Mexican cuisine lately, and he's like crazy talented. I learned so much. Um, and then my friend Josh um, was very into like molecular gastronomy and does has some amazing technique, like incredible technique. Um, and then our my friend Pete, uh, who the marinated peppers were inspired by, he used to always bring those to test kitchens. Um, did like front of the house and was just so charismatic with it. And then we, uh, Mike also did front of the house more recently because um, he has a passion for wine and beer. Um, but he also would cook like some Italian style cuisine. And Sam, she did uh, front of the house. Um, but yeah, we it was so much fun. We would put up, we would have put so much pressure on ourselves to do these elaborate, elaborate meals. There was one time where we decided to do two dinners back to back. And mind you, we're like, it's a few of us preparing all these elements, cooking and plating it to order. And we decided to do two in a row. It was crazy. We had to be out of the place in like a half an hour and we were still serving our last course. That was the fastest I've ever broke down a station. But oh, it was really fun. 
This past summer, we actually, um, Kat and I cooked for the group of everybody else because we were able to get off of work that day. And we went to the public market and got a bunch of ingredients and it was awesome. So here, fingers crossed to have another dinner. If I do, I will for sure tape that for you guys because it's pretty awesome what we can all do as a group because we all have our different cooking styles, but we all, you know, really balance well. And I'm kind of the little sister of the group, so they like to rag on me. I usually deserve it. I give it back, don't worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really miss that. But yeah, so I really have a big passion for cooking. As you can tell, I wouldn't be doing this vlog if I didn't. Um, but yeah, I really hope to cook with those guys again. Um, and then yeah, I just wanted to show you guys my cookbooks for tonight. A little bit more about me. Um, I was a history major, as you can tell by all my books that I was talking about earlier. Um, I love to read. Uh, I love my dog, who's sleeping right there. Um, love to travel. I just really appreciate you guys watching this vlog. Um, it means a lot to me, and I really want you guys to be interactive with me. Let me know what you want to see, what dishes you want me to make, because I really will make them. Um, right now it's a little bit challenging just to kind of go to the grocery store. I only want to go when I really have to, um, but we can make do with what we have. But thanks guys so much for watching. I'm sorry this wasn't really a cooking vlog today, but that's just not realistic. We can't do that every day, um, but food is always incorporated as we looked at. Um, but thanks for watching. Have a good night. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Tegan, what's that? You want ice cream? They don't. Okay. Good boy. Aww, do you like your ice cream? Look at this cutie. Wow. Do you love your ice cream? Do you want me to stop bothering you? <laughs>